Hi everyone, my name is Ken. Welcome to This House. Today we are exploring a storybook Tudor house located in Afton, Missouri. This house was designed by Carl Reif, a very noteworthy architect here in the St. Louis area. Now, before we even go inside, there's a lot of charm to kind of talk about. So we noticed this very unique Cyclopean brickwork out front immediately. And the local legend has it that he would wheel around wheelbarrows full of bricks and stones and have the neighborhood children just kind of chuck them up at his house. So that's just a really fun story. It probably isn't true, but it just goes along with this house. So let's go check out the inside. Walking inside of this house, this is like nothing we've ever seen before. The entire interior is stucco, stone, and brick, as well as local wood types. One of the first things that we really notice is this old mail slot here. And we saw the slot for this just next to the front door. As we walk further into this house, we of course just pass through an archway. Now directly above my head are all of these exposed beams. And this kind of delineates the path to the kitchen, which we'll get to soon. But first I want to point out, there are these little statues of bears carved out of wood poking out of the walls. So this is the story of the three little bears, um, just like the fairy tale. So we have the baby bear here, we have mama bear over here, and then over here on the far side, watching the door and guarding the house is Papa Bear. So as we kind of turn into here, we come into a very large living room. This has a lot of amazing details. There is an original chandelier. There are exposed beams, stucco walls. Over on this side, we have pointed arches above the fireplace and the built-in bookshelf. Over here, we have this amazing leaded glass with these stained glass details. Now, these could be family crests. I'm not entirely certain. And there are just these little beautiful bits that are kind of put in here with mixed matched hardware, which is all once again original to the house. Now off to this side is a sunroom. So we can go ahead and explore this. And this sunroom is really lovely. We can see we just passed through this double set of French doors here. And over on this side, we can see that the beams follow the curves of the house. And this is all screened in, so these aren't actually windows. It makes it more of a Four Seasons room. Above us are exposed beams, and of course, these are structural for the house. There's a ceiling fan out here, there's a swinging bench. Now, something really interesting. Once again, we can see the Cyclopean construction with the bricks, how they're just mashed together in a way that doesn't really have any rhyme or reason, but it still supports the house. So that's just very interesting. Now, this little window here is once again, another leaded stained glass window, and this is going to look directly into the kitchen. So let's go check that out. Walking back inside the house, we are now going to head over to the kitchen, which is down this spiral staircase. So come on through here. Rounding this corner, we now come down the spiral staircase into the kitchen. And this is that little window that we saw on the other side of this out in the sunroom, just so we know where we are. So as we come through here, this brings us to a small hearth room and it has a fireplace over on this side and it is non-functioning, but it's just super cute. Of course, it has shelves on either side, exposed beams on the ceiling. And over on this side is a double French door with its original hardware and a skeleton key. And this is going to take you out to a side patio and we'll explore all of that in just a little while. Making our way this way, this will actually bring us through a rounded archway into the actual kitchen. And over here is a country charm stove. Now this is actually a replica and is not original to the house. It was put in here in the seventies. And something really charming is come take a look at this. This is how you actually work the stove. And I'm not even going to finagle with this because I have no idea how this actually works. But here's another reference to fairy tales we can see a little mouse that's sticking up out of the oven here. And if we turn around and look above this archway, there is another little mouse that's coming out of the woodwork here.
Moving on now from the kitchen, we come into this little closet space and the ceiling has really started to drop here. There are built-ins on this side and this is a giant pantry. Now through here, there are shelves on the walls. In front of us is an exit to the backyard, once again with leaded stained glass. And we'll explore all of that very last. So come on through here and let's go upstairs. Now this takes us up to four steps, which is going to take us up to the landing. And this is where we very first enter the house. Now here's the staircase that's going to take us up to the second floor. So come on up here and immediately facing us is a built-in and it's got original pieces on it so the original hardware original poles and we're going to start seeing this as we kind of travel throughout the bedroom so come on up here passing around this piece of built-in furniture we now come into the bathroom so let's check this out there are mosaic tile floors which are done very colorfully all around the base here the tub is encased in brick and over above the tub is a leaded glass window with its original poles, which is deeply inset into the wall. And then there are actually Hollywood lights that are surrounding the mirror over the pedestal sink. And something really interesting to notice before we exit is that there is a pointed pediment above the store. There's even a knocker on it. So it's just a polite way of asking if someone's in the restroom. And then this hardware is really interesting. It has been twisted and coiled and it's just not quite like something we've ever seen before. So let's get a closer look at this. Moving on from the bathroom, we now come through this open archway and we're going to go down just a couple of steps to bring us into what could be considered a bedroom. Originally, this room was designed by Carl Reif to be his architecture studio. And unfortunately, he never actually got to live in this house because the bank ended up taking it away from him before he could move in. So it's said that he died of heartbreak. Now, of course, this house has been occupied ever since. We can see the beautiful natural lighting that comes in here with these deep sills that have been heavily distressed, beautiful windows that look out over the garden. And we can imagine that he would have really enjoyed this space for drawing. And you know, maybe someday someone else who has a passion for architecture or the arts will be able to utilize this as a studio as it was originally intended. Now there are these massive built-ins over here and let's actually get a closer look at this. The wood grain on here is just gorgeous and it also has its original hardware pieces. So let's just open one of these up and take a peek inside of here. Moving on out of this bedroom, we're now going to go up more steps. And this is a good place to point out that all of these rails and spindles were handcrafted by Carl Reif himself. So we can just take a closer look at that for a moment. Above the stairs here is a light fixture that he also crafted by himself. And it's just one of those really unique pieces that just blends so perfectly into the house. So moving on up here, the ceiling starts to compress again and we come to this pointed archway and this is going to lead us to an outlook where we can see over the great room that we very first saw. And this takes us into the owner's bedroom and we've passed through this pointed archway here and there's this beautiful door with all of its original hardware and bracing that we can see. As we start to look around the space, there are some more built-ins that are built into the wall and the structure. There is a closet over here and we'll just take a peek inside of this. Now that we've seen everything that's above ground, let's go check out the basement. Come on. Passing back by the entryway, there is actually another opening that the front door conceals whenever you open it. And this is going to take us down to the basement. Arriving at the bottom of the steps, we are first greeted by Camelot, the horse. And this horse actually contains a bit of a secret. We can open up these doors here and we find a handle, which is going to take us out to a shed. So this is like a secret hidden room. So come on in here and we'll just kind of glance around this area. Moving on from the secret room, there is another leaded 
window right here, and it has its original hardware. And this peeks out once again over the back garden. And over on this side are these amazing built-in shelves. And this is all solid wood, original with the house. So let's just take a moment to really appreciate the woodwork in this room. Now moving out of this space, we're now going to go down more stairs and this is going to bring us down to the winemaking room. But first there's a lovely closet over here, once again with its original hardware, mixed wood types, all original to the house. And we'll just take a peek inside of here. Now, making our way to the very bottom of the house, now we are as far down as we can go. There is this old table set up right here, and this is where wine would have been made. So we can see that there's an old sink here that's covered up right now. Beautiful hardware and beautiful wood finishes. And over on this side of the basement is the root cellar, and this is where canned goods would have been stored. Perhaps the wine would have been put to ferment. And we can just imagine that this was a very usable and very utilitarian space in the house. Over here, we can see an original support beam to the house. And above this is the spiral staircase that took us down to the kitchen from the living room. And we can see the very bottom of that in concrete. Now that we've seen the entirety of the house, let's go explore the gardens. Walking outside, now we can really start to explore this garden. And we're just going to kind of walk through the yard here. There is this adorable windmill that sits out front. Now, it does look like it needs a little bit of repair work, but it's just one of those details that's been with the house for its history and really blends into the space. Now, right here is in front of the great room, and this is the awning that comes down over the lead of glass. We can see that there is moss that is growing on it, which just really lends it more to that fairy tale feel. Cutting back this way through the yard, we're passing by the front door again, and we are going to go explore the backyard. So the way we get there is through this lovely garden path, which brings us downhill. Now over here, the secret room that we saw behind Camelot while we were inside. So come on up here. There are these beautiful granite pavers that bring us into the backyard. And this garden is just breathtaking. There are all of these mature, shorter trees, and we can really see the masonry work back here. We can see the Tudor swath and timbers that are set above the brick. And over here is a porch. Now this leads from the kitchen to the backyard. There is a water pump over to this side, and back here in the corner is an old well. This no longer functions for the house. Of course, this is on public water. Now that we've seen the entire property, let's go talk to the listing agent. Dana, I want to thank you so much for allowing us to tour this home. Now, right before we showed up, something interesting happened. Can you tell our audience kind of what went down here? It was a little scary and I was a little freaked out about it, so I apologize for my attitude, but this is such a unique house. I think people think it's theirs. And so when we came in, there were actually people in that sunroom and I had to shoo them out and they wouldn't leave. So just in respect to this house and any other houses you may see, it's still a private residence. And unless it's open for viewing or you have somebody with you, I, here's a good reminder, it's somebody's house. And just because it's for sale or it's out in the public domain, it's still somebody's public or private house and be respectful. That's all I can say. <laughs> yep, and just because a house seems to be vacant doesn't mean that it's abandoned or that it isn't cared for anymore. And Dana, you like to list these old and unique properties yes, yes. and find new stewards to take care yes. of these marvelous works of architecture. Yes. So I greatly admire oh, your work in the real estate market here. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's an interesting industry and this is the most interesting house I've ever had. I, do, I mostly work in suburbia, West County, et cetera, um, in, in suburbia houses that all look the same. So this is extremely nice. I love to have that business. Um, and you can contact me down here. He's gonna put my website on there. But I, I thank the size family and the Canopus family for letting me represent them in this house. All right, Dana, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. I appreciate it. It's awesome meeting you. Good awesome luck. meeting you too. Thank you everybody for watching. Make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you next time on This House.